The most important thing in communication is hearing what isn't said. Peter Drucker, business philosopher. Automation has become our new innovation. We all want something immediately, which is why Amazon is the most profitable business in the world today. But can Amazon provide a couch to you when you need somewhere to stay because your life is pivoting? What would it be like if you could create buy-in with everyone you're meeting at a virtual event or in-person event that creates opportunities ongoingly in your life and theirs? When you talk about relationships, there's a, there's a relationship network behind every one of those small businesses. And I'll tell the this, and I have a slide for it. And it literally says, if you order something from Amazon, Amazon will get you exactly what you ordered faster than anyone else on the planet. But Amazon will not be there to hold your hand when you lose your job. They will not be there to open up the next opportunity when, when adversity happens in your life. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Looking for more education, knowledge, or entertainment around a desired subject matter to pursue that next goal in life? But are you lacking the time to sit down and study? Look, I get it. That is why I use and refer anybody to Audible as you can download titles and listen offline anytime, anywhere. The app is free. It can be installed on all smartphones and tablets. And one thing I love about them on top of on-demand content like podcasts is you can listen across all devices without losing your spot. Get a 30-day trial on us by simply checking out audibletrial.com forward slash AMV. Again, Ambitious Vet, that's www.audibletrial.com forward slash AMV. After that first free month, it's only $15 a month to gain access to thousands of titles, to gain the needed wisdom, knowledge, and entertainment to achieve your next goal. Welcome to the Ambitious Fit Podcast, where we believe that if you desire more than you have in any area of life, you have to become more in the process. My name is Chris Hoffman, Marine Corps combat veteran, social entrepreneur, family man, and personal and professional development leader. On this show, I dive into the trenches with big thinking and conscious living veterans who know what it takes to not only pay the bills after the military, but really live with a sense of purpose, satisfaction, and career fulfillment we all desire most after financial stability is no longer a challenge to overcome. If you haven't already ambitious fit, grab your pen and paper. It's time to gain the golden grenades needed to break through your fear barriers and live a life of purpose with passion. It's time to get into the trenches, dig, dig into your purpose, and, and fire up your life fulfillment. The Ambitious Vet Podcast starts now. What's going on, Ambitious Vet? We're right back inside the trenches. Today we got the man himself, Dave Berlin. He's a Marine Corps veteran, and his passion is to inspire you to build more authentic relationships to, so that you can unlock more opportunities so you can live your best life. He's a speaker, contract consultant, and he helps heart-centered zero entrepreneurs build effective teams that scale. So you can go on more vacations and build more companies. Dave is also a city leader for Bunker Labs, which is really just a good friend of ours, Ambitious Vet. It's a veteran organization to help inspire, connect, and equip veterans and their spouses with resources to start and grow businesses. He also has a passion for building relationships. His core message is why networking. It's about connecting with people on a more authentic level before the business card or title. He is a TEDx speaker alumni, a former speaker at the Disrupt HR, and is currently the interim director of sales at Chief Operations Officer at Deliver Capital. Dave and the team of underwriters are changing lives by helping people get the money they deserve to grow the businesses that the world needs right now more than ever, Ambitious Vet. Here's a random fact of Dave. He's also a wedding DJ. And private event MC, he has, a, he has DJed for more than 30, 50, 350, that is, ambitious vets, plus weddings and private events all over the United States. And you might catch him, you know, nowadays bouncing around the planet with a gigantic boom box. We'll dive into that right now. Dave, man, are you there? I'm here. What's up, buddy? Hey, brother. It's good to have you, man. I mean, 
anytime that me and you get together, I've just realized that it's Golden Grenade City that we're walking inside of, man. You're just, you're, you're a crane eater like me, probably a lot of these listeners, but you're also a Golden Grenade launcher. Um, so, you know, kind of fill the gaps inside that introduction and tell us a little bit about you as a human being right now, man, what you're most passionate about. Yeah, right now I'm really excited that uh, you know I'm I'm living life as a as a father. My my kiddo is about to head off into his first school year on the you know starting off virtually, so that's kind of exciting, a little nerve wracking because we're we're taking up the same bandwidth all at the same time. But uh, so that that's really good. Uh, living the life out here in Las Vegas, looking to see how I can be instrumental in helping this city and and some other cities across the country bounce back and and uh, you know, show the world that America's open for business. Yeah, that's great. And um, I'm a little scared of Vegas right now, man. I'll tell you why, I'm from St. Louis. I'm a St. Louis Blues fan. And the Vegas Knights, man, are, are looking real good. I'm like, hold on, Vegas ain't playing with sports teams, brother. Yep, <laughs> we're, we're, we're leaving it up to them to, to bring this city uh, back to life and get people fired up again. So it's, it's up to them and it's up to all the, the performers that want to do a residency out here after they get, get the green light to start doing that. Yeah, for sure. I think, and I think the proper name is Vegas Golden Knights. They just look amazing and they're scary, but man, I mean, you transitioned out of the Marine Corps after serving September 11th, right? Mm -hmm. Um, in 2003, I'm assuming that was a little challenging for you, right? Because you, are kind of like me and probably the ambitious vet that's listening to this right now. And you were, you are still today always looking for the next challenge. Mm -hmm. So what were some of the landmines that you hit in those first few years, man? How'd you overcome them? Yeah. You know, I went in pre nine 11, got out post nine 11 and it was very much a, a different, a different world. Um, yeah. You know, in the Ted talk, I talked a lot about transition because we were on deployment for that first uh, when 9-11 happened, we were in Darwin, Australia. And the only re wow. reason why that's relevant is I was not in the United States when America reacted the way that everyone reacted. And that's a, that's a pivotal moment in everybody's life. Hmm. I, was, I was sort of numb to that because I was out, you know, we were out there ready to do the job. So coming back post 9-11, just to, it, it felt like a different country. So plans and everything that I might've had, you know, I always had the plan to come home. Uh, I went back to Oklahoma and my goal was to start a family. And, and that's exactly what I did. Um, now the, the landmines for me were a lot of communication, right? Because mm. I came yeah. from the, you know, I, I, the first job that I really chose to work after the Marine Corps was I worked at a youth academy with at-risk youth. So the easiest way to describe it, I was like a drill instructor for high school dropouts. <laughs> The, the way that Which it they was, may need, they may need. Yeah, yeah, no, they definitely needed it, but, but <laughs> they, they called it a quasi military program, mm. meaning, you know, sort of, well, I came from a very military program coming from the Marine Corps infantry. So the challenges for me were very much internal, not treating, not treating cadets and teenagers like Marines, not having mm. the same expectations for that. And honestly, that created a lot of friction for me and my communication with, with, uh, my wife and my, my family. So I guess one of the things that was, was interesting there is I caught myself and I didn't recognize it until later, but even the way I raised my son, you know, when he was a toddler, I was like, I wasn't treating him like a Marine, but mm. definitely not treating him like a toddler, if that makes sense. So a lot of stuff for me was very much uh, the landmines were communication and, and, you know, trying to make sure that I wasn't just being a, honestly, just being a dick all the time. Yeah, no, I, I have a lot of dick moments, you know, first few years out of getting out of the Marine Corps, I can imagine I was probably knife handing a lot of people commanding in communication, not really listening. I don't think Marine Corps really, well, we, we follow orders, but you know, we're constantly like, Hey, go do this and no feedback. Um, so man, I mean, that's, that's interesting, right? I think communication is becoming a really big topic within the veteran community as far as just growth, advancement, stuff like that. But What's really cool, man, is I went and checked out your TEDx talk, which is brilliant, by the way. Um, anything that comes out of your mouth is usually pretty good. Pretty good, man. Um, and Ambitious Fed, I'll have the link to the TEDx talk inside the show notes uh, below. But inside of this, he talked about getting out, getting a blue collar job, you know, digging holes, but didn't feel like he was uh, really making an impact. So 
put us in that moment, man, where you were like, okay, I got financial stability, but you know, digging holes ain't really it. Yeah. I kind of, I kind of put myself on timeout. I got, I got in a little bit of a, a little bit of trouble before I got out of the military. So I was really hard on myself hmm. and I was like, Oh, you know, you can't bring any value, but going and, you know, working your ass off somewhere. So yeah, one of the, one of the, the real first job before that youth Academy was, it was pretty short, but yeah, I, I became a, I was roused abouting, which I didn't even know what that meant at the time. But it was basically <laughs> I was doing oil field work hmm. and I was sitting on a ditch, which, you know, eight, 10 hours a day, just digging ditches, uh, you know, as far as the eye could see and running different pipe and stuff like that. It, it was interesting because it gave me a lot of time to sit and think. Hmm. I started thinking about things like purpose and this is way before I ever like picked up any kind of books or anything. So, wow. It was like, uh, you know, I was just, I knew there had to be something more. And, and the frustration there was I, I felt like I had no purpose. And so that moving into, you know, as time went forward, it was actually, that was in 2003. I think the, the Ted talk was almost 10, 11 years later. Um, through some other transitions, I started to learn and discover what purpose really was. So when I, I did that talk, which shameless plug, really random fact, that was the first public talk I ever did. Wow. And so as I was preparing for that, that's kind of the big struggle that I saw is I felt like a lot of people that I saw struggling were people that, you know, they lacked purpose or they couldn't figure out how to whatever they were doing, they couldn't figure out how to create purpose out of it. Um, so to me, that's that, crazy. Was, that was a big thing. Yeah. Brother, that's crazy, man. That was your first public talk because you wouldn't have, you couldn't tell how you articulated the, the different points of finding purpose and stuff like that. Um, but I think a lot of ambitious vets could potentially identify with that, right? And getting out, getting a blue collar job, working with your hands, you know, getting paid, uh, you know, an honest wage, um, stuff like that. And then like being like, huh, this is it. So it sounds like the youth academy that you designed a program for, that was your first step towards really finding, okay, this is, this is, this is my thing. Am I right? Yeah. And I, I, I knew about that place. It's, you know, my life is so random how all of these things I'm connected to. Right. I kind of mm. felt like, you know, I don't, not necessarily a spiritual thing for me, but kind of the universe puts you in those places. That that youth academy was for the entire state of Oklahoma, but mm, it could wow. have been in it could have been in any town. It could have been in Tulsa. It could have been Oklahoma City. Any of that. It was a small town outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma. That was my hometown. I grew up like knowing about that program because it started when I was in high school. So there was this huge urge to, you know, be be that voice of reason and be that coach and be that mentor for, for kids that were my age, that were from Oklahoma, that were going through a lot of the same struggles I went through. You know what I mean? Uh, fighting, drugs, kind of all that, all that at risk youth. I was definitely at risk youth. So it was my way to come back and contribute. So when I set the intention of doing that, that was actually part of why I got out of the military was to go home, start a family, do that job. And it all came into fruition because, you know, there was people connected there that, that brought me on board, but that's where, that's where I recovered that, that purpose. And it was through that. I mean, I, I was there for seven years. It's a six month, it's about a six month program. So I was there for 13 and a half cycles. Wow. So it was uh, definitely regimented, but as much as I cared about coaching and, and being a, a role model, I also, that's, that's where I got my first dose of change management because I started to see things in the program that could be better. And I started building them, presenting them, executing. And those are some of the biggest skill sets that I took later into the business world. Right. That's huge, man. Thanks for sharing that, breaking that down, because, you know, I think a lot of ambitious vet, maybe you that are listening to this, ambitious vet, that you get in jobs, you, you're there, you're doing the daily functions of it. And you're just not, you know, it's not the thing, right? So it's finding the right thing for you and finding out what lights you up. And Dave Berlin here has done a great job as far as finding financial stability, but then not settling for it to find out more. And, you know, man, I'm excited to transition to another topic right now, which is, as I tell you, every time um, that I see you, man, you are one of the best people within the veteran community. 
Um, and I know that you're connected to more communities than just the veteran community, but that's how we met. That you spot opportunity, man, uh, better than someone I've ever seen. You create opportunities through relationships, which I think is a invaluable skill that, you know, I'm still trying to figure out how to build, right? And I think a lot of people are. So you started DJ Connections. Um, you, were, you were traveling during that time with Tulsa, Kansas City, Dallas, all over the world, man. During that time, I could only imagine that you had to, you know, start creating opportunities through networks. So walk us through your model of why networking and how we can start developing, you know, authentic um, networking skills. Yeah. So quick little caveat to that. So I, I started working at DJ Connection in 2010 and it was literally on my 30th birthday, like in September of 2010, that I left the youth academy and went to work for, for DJ Connection. So uh, the guy who'd started it, he'd grown it to maximize all of, you know, Oklahoma. Hmm. And as I, I really saw that as an adventure and as an opportunity, cause he's the first person that put a book in my hand and said, you know, you don't have to work off of an hourly wage. So I went straight into commission only scared to death, put a lot of pressure on my family. Um, you know, ultimately that created challenges way down the road, but um, it was going out DJing weddings that, that I started to see and listen to more books man, we could really grow this thing. Why don't we, why don't we take it to Dallas? Mm. We were, we we're already doing a few events down there. And he was like, it's not scalable. And I was like, I'm in the Marines, you know, everything's scalable. So just give me the keys <laughs> and give me some money and let me do it. So I right. went to Dallas. I, I went, I drove back and forth from Tulsa to Dallas for a year. And I was DJing weddings on the weekends, hiring people, training them during the week. And I just made it happen. You know, I, I scaled that into about 12 or 15 people past the torch did the same thing in Kansas city. But while I was doing that, this is where I really started to plug in and you're right, build networks. And I would always start with the veteran community. So that was the, the early on, onset of, uh, I could tell you the first time I saw a Ted talk, it was in Kansas city. And I knew that I wanted to do that and, and talk about veteran relationships, but through all of that growth, right. Opening up in Dallas, Kansas city, Denver, Indianapolis, and traveling everywhere in between. It was, the relationships that would create more opportunity. And I was still pretty naive and I was an early salesperson. So I made a lot of the same mistakes that a lot of people did. And I would just always try to look at people as leads. And if they weren't, then I would just go to the next. Well, the more I was building more authentic relationships, and this is way developed over time, like it just created more opportunity, never go into it with any expectations. Mm -hmm. And then, as my message and everything has always you know, kind of jumped around there for years, it was all veteran transition, veteran empowerment, and veteran entrepreneurship. Around 2017, somebody asked me to speak in an event. I just went through a pretty tough uh, landmine, you know, going through, I started going through a divorce uh, mm -hmm. and trying to move to a different city. Uh, my world got rocked. And uh, when the first person asked me to speak, everything that I had been speaking up about up to that point almost didn't, didn't seem real or relevant anymore. And I was like, well, what am I going to talk about? And it was for a networking group. And it was like this aha moment where I said, okay, well, you know, I'd done a lot of uh, work with the Simon Sinek organization uh, to help people find their why. And, and I, I was, you know, an early facilitator for the why discovery course. So I've always been really good at extracting that. And I was like, can I just put why in front of networking and call it why networking? So that's wow. what I did. And, and I started talking about building more authentic relationships. And this was the first thing that I really grabbed a hold of and said, I want to make this conversation my own. So as it evolved over, you know, that was in 2017, December, uh, I've been given virtually the same talk and, and evolving that same conversation. And then last October, when I hosted my first live event in Las Vegas, I decided let's let's iron this out. Let's make some principles. So I wrote a couple principles. It went really well, but then I got busy with client work. And then as as uh, COVID and quarantine happened, uh, like many like many people, we had to look at the work we were doing and say, does it hold water? And when I looked at those principles, and I I started applying them in this new virtual world to build connections. Not only did they they hold true, 
but they stood taller than ever. Mm. And that's where now it's evolved to those, those basic principles. So yeah, um, yeah, it's pretty, yeah, thank, pretty thanks for, thanks for providing the backstory and just mm-hmm. the context. Cause one thing I've noticed about you too, there, you know, tons of obviously tons of gifts, talents and all that kind of stuff, man. And like your, your way of being able to extract other people's content, intellectual property, um, resources, and like provide, you know, a product that is better than that. I mean, I think they call it the zero to one or whatever. You don't reinvent the wheel, whatever that book's called. Um, but man, I mean, that's another amazing thing. So ambitious vet, if you're looking to figure out how to even extract content, Dave Berlin's your man, cause he is a master at that. So brother, let's dive into the first principle, man. What, what's the first principle for why networking? Yeah. And, and where I think this is relevant to anybody, but I think it's also powerful for, for the audience here and ambitious vets is uh, the first step is to show up. You know, it's really easy to, to put something uh, in the idea bucket and never put it on the calendar. But for me, it's like, just show up. Like there's some stuff where it's like, it's kind of last minute. I might have to scurry across town, but I'm going to show up because it makes everything possible. The second one is to serve, right? And this, this should be pretty easy for, for people, especially ambitious vets, is we always go into it with a servant mentality anyways, but think serve before sell. In fact, nowhere in these principles is sell. So it's really just how can I help other people? So normally when I'm going to an event, whether it be virtual or anything, I've got the whole network of everyone I've ever met in my, in mind. And I'm thinking, how can I connect somebody with a resource or with a person when I go to this event, virtual or, or in person? So you got to You got to go with a servant's heart, a servant's mentality. The third part, uh, the third principle is to share. And, and some of these principles, go back to kindergarten and I I designed it that way on on purpose because everything that we needed to learn about humanity, we learned in kindergarten. So, so it's important to share. And when it comes to sharing, um, I can only explain this from hosting events, live, virtual, all that stuff. Uh, And if you go to something that's a good experience, you want to share that with other people, take pictures of the speakers that are up there and share something that you learned from it. All those little things matter. And I promise as somebody who puts events together, if you want to build a really strong network and create more opportunities, those people are connected to a lot of people. If you serve them and share their stuff in any way, you're, you're in 150 people might go to the event, but if you're the only person that took pictures of them or took a screenshot when they were presenting and share that with them uh, or share that on your page, man, you just got plugged into that person and they're probably going to show up for, for the next thing that you do. So uh, I do it with no expectations. I just I just share people's stuff that I think somebody from my network might get value from. So I love that. Let's 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 know on that one real quick. I mean, because that's a quick win for an ambitious vet that's listening to this right now. Because I I've learned I've learned how to do some you know some things around that line, but I've never thought about the picture thing and stuff like that. But one of the greatest mentors that I've ever had in my life um, once told me, brother, that social proof is the best gift you can give anybody. And it, it, what you just said right there is another testament to that, man. Just, okay, you've met them. Great. You built rapport, but that rapport is going to go bye-bye within 24 hours after their next networking event. You've got to keep yourself relevant and get buy-in. And what I hear and what you're saying is, man, hey, take a picture, share with them what they're up to within your social networking platforms. And, you know, that shows that you are about other people. You're a servant leader. It goes up to show up, serve, share. And I can just see how you're bringing all this together. It's amazing, man. Yep. Anything you would add to that? To, to share? No, I mean, I, I can give you a quick example. I attended, you know, I'm speaking at an event tomorrow. As of this recording, I'm speaking at an event. I always try to show up. It's a weekly event. So I try to show up the week before. I did last week. And the guy who was speaking turned out, turned out to be a veteran. Uh, he had yeah. a great slide deck and presentation. Even though we were virtual, I moved it to speaker frame. I moved his frame down into the corner. And the last slide that he he did was about mindset. I screenshotted it, put it up on LinkedIn, tagged him, requested him, talked about what I got out of it. We were on a next we were on a call the next day, and now he's coming to like five of my events. Wow! Uh, and sharing that with his network. 
So it, it works. It, yeah. it, just, it goes back to, it goes back to kindergarten, man. You want to share other people's stuff. <laughs> there it um, is. The, the fourth one is, is really important too. And this is, this is where it's a little bit more long-term. And the, the real quick caveat to how this came about, um, actually when I wrote it, it was different. Somebody actually brought it to life when, when uh, he taught me how to do a poll at, at live events. By show of hands, how many people came here to find the next client or to find new clients? All the hands go up. Keep those hands up if you came here to become somebody else's client. They all go down. So, and here's the problem with that. And this is a totally deep conversation. I'll just give you the highlights. When people say, what do you do? It's misinterpreted as sell me on what you do. Mm. And then people go into pitch mode and it gets weird. And if there's any level of uncomfortable, uh, comfortableness, then it, it, it can create, it doesn't break the relationship, but it definitely creates a barrier to create a real one. So, yeah. so I create fun events that are a little bit more, uh, the questions that we ask are a lot more fun than that. In fact, I give people like 20 questions to ask that are not what do you do just to get more engagement. All that being said, we're going for long term. So the, the principle number four is synergy. And it's not, it's not what can we work on today that's going to be awesome because we may not have that opportunity right now based on what you're doing, based on what I'm doing. But two years from now, we might reconcile, uh, uh, re reconnect because of, you know, you're doing something different, I'm doing something different, and now we can bring those two worlds together. Uh, this is where part of the tagline was before the business card or the title, right, of whole wide networking. Bro, what I've learned is most people in this day and age are not going to be passing out the same business card that they were two or three years ago. And if, if COVID and quarantine has shown us anything, it's that there's 20 million people that aren't passing out a business card at all. And when those titles and roles change, we've got to be able to have the synergy to unlock those opportunities because, man, you know, you know, I've been thankful to be nimble through most of that stuff. But trust me, the first time that I have nowhere to go and I have no way to make money, I'm, I'm reaching back out to my whole network. And it's normally within about four phone calls that I've got somebody who, hey, you want to come sleep on my couch in Phoenix? I, I got work for you. What, whatever it is, like I've got opportunity. So the synergy is more of a long-term play. So yeah. think with that, you know, don't try and just make a relationship happen today. Can I add to that real quick? I mean, yeah. that ambitious vet, that's so good because, you know, I, I can't count how many conferences or networking events I've gone through different careers in different industries I've been a part of that people are just like, Hey, we need to talk. Here's my card. Mm -hmm. And then walk away, mm -hmm. walk away, brother. And I'm just like, okay, so w w what opportunity do you see for us to, you know, yeah. talk, right? Yeah. Um, so it just, it, it narrows, you know, it has you just be more efficient with your time and stuff like that. And that's, that's great. Um, thanks for like, you know, diving into the proactiveness of networking versus just, I got my title. Okay, great. You got a title. Um, you know, here's my card. We, we need to network. Okay, great. Um, but no, like, why? Why do we need to be working together? And what is the next win I can give you and asking those right questions? That's, that's awesome stuff, brother. Ambitious yep. Net, be, be connecting with Dave Berlin and hire this man to speak live at your next event for this to happen. <laughs> I'm excited for, the, for the, the last two, man. Let's dive into yeah. the fifth one. Well, the, the fifth one's really quick and easy, and it's really just a reminder because this is the part right now where I start getting really excited. But uh, there's, there's this really funny thing that I, I would assume that most ambitious vets might have as well. Uh, maybe not all, but there's at least a quarter of them that might. I call it resting marine face, right? And that's where I'm having a great time, but I'm so focused that I look like I'm pissed off. So to keep it simple, going back to kindergarten, the fifth one is really just a reminder for me. And it's just smile. Just smile. Mm -hmm. Remember to smile because that smile and that, that perception and that, that picture of what people see for that first impression could be what gives them the, the permission to engage with you and start from the beginning. So, so if you're pissed off, look, you know, if that's where you're at, it could create a barrier for somebody else to build a relationship. So that one's pretty simple. That's great. Um, and that's then, great. and then the final one, uh, this one came to life at my last event in October, but this is one that really rang out loud post COVID and quarantine. 
And number six is shop local. And what I, one thing I saw was I, lo- I saw a lot of organizations and companies really try to support their local businesses and local communities. I saw the same kind of reaction in most cities, right, through social media and all that stuff. And w- what's interesting about it is when you talk about relationships, there's a, there's a relationship network behind every one of those small businesses. And I'll tell this, and I have a slide for it, and it literally says, if you order something from Amazon, Amazon will get you exactly what you ordered faster than anyone else on the planet. But Amazon will not be there to hold your hand when you lose your job. They will not be there to open up the next opportunity when, when adversity happens in your life. Hmm. So that's important because, and I, there's just one example where I, I had a poster printed um, and I could have went online and got it for like, you know, 25 bucks or something. It was a custom design thing that I did. I decided to go through somebody local here who had, we, we'd been connected, but not really. I went and I went through his shop. He gave me a better deal. And now that unlocked his entire network. And I'm still fairly new to this city. I needed that. So if you can shop local, make it a point to you and not necessarily just in your community. Obviously for me, I try to keep it veteran. Uh, so I, I always try to work with veteran owned businesses and highlight them and keep them in my referral bucket because we, that's our local. Our local is, you know, it, it crosses city lines, but our local is the, the fellow veteran entrepreneur who's on mm. the hustle. That's huge. No, I love that. Um, it's just, it's just great wisdom, right? Because it humanizes the whole process versus automate it. I mean, at the end of the day, we need human connection, brother. Mm-hmm. So th- mm-hmm. that's what I hear in that. It's just like, we need human connection. We need not to, automate, automation is great, but like at the end of the day, human connection is what really moves things. I mean, businesses are a people business, right? You're, you're doing business with people, not necessarily a machine, right? So that's, that's, Great wisdom. So thank you for that, brother. So um, ambitious vet, we're going to take a real quick 10 second break to thank our sponsor. Right when we get back, we'll be diving into Dave Berlin's three gold grenades to keep you unstuck in your career, life, and business. We'll be right back. Thanks to Rooftop Leadership Live, which is a three-day virtual training event that will help you find relevance and uncertainty through deeper human connection. Why is that important, ambitious vet? Well, you have instincts that are a key differentiator in the marketplace today. You are just simply missing how to use them to frame up your rooftop story to own your life, own your story, and own every room that you step inside of. Visit rooftopleadership.com, click their live event, and learn more. Enter in code AMBITIOUS, that is spelled A-M-B-I-T-I, OUS to take 10% off for being someone willing to invest in yourself as a veteran. Again, that's rooftopleadership.com. Enter in code ambitious to take 10% off for being a veteran that's being willing to, you know, pay to play to be with the big players. I mean, eventually you're going to learn that that's how life works anyways. All right, Ambitious Vets, we're right back inside the trenches with the one and only Dave Berlin. He's been sharing his top six golden grenades principles around why networking, why getting out there and creating authentic connections with people, create opportunities like effortlessly in your life. So I'm excited to see how he summarizes this whole thing with the three golden grenades that he's going to provide right now. That would be potentially your next steps in staying unstuck in your life, career, and business. So Dave, man, Big tradition here. Uh, what are three golden grenades? You know, wisdom bombs, I guess you could call them. That could just, you know, help a veteran stay unstuck, right? You can summarize the show or just come in here and be like, hey, if anything that you get from this show, these are the three things. What would they be? Yeah. Uh, again, just a little bit of backstory. So just like you, just like me, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people out there inspired huge by podcasts and they all have played an important role in my path and my journey. There was one that I listened to years ago and at the end of his podcast, he would always ask, what are the truths? And as soon as I defined what those were, I kept them and, and, and they've become anchors for me. And 
almost everything that I do comes from those into all the projects and stuff that I do. So the three golden grenades, number one, uh, your network is your net worth. And, and, and the whole idea there is that just continue to plant seeds, continue to build relationships. They won't all blossom and bloom today, but there's going to come a time where you're able to help somebody else. And there's going to be a time where, where you need their help. And so, so that's the first one. The second one is we all have the same 24 hours in a day. And, and there's so many people that say they don't have time. You know, I'm up most of the time at like four o'clock, four 30. And just, even if I'm just sitting there thinking it's free time to think and then keep going. And, and so for that, you can look at the most successful people. You could look at the people that have challenges and we, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. And I hope that gives more positive perspective to see how you can do it. You know, um, one of my, one of my mentors and, and friends, uh, Lee Cockrell, he used to be the VP of Disney and he wrote a book called time management magic. And that's a beacon that I go off of to make sure that, you know, time is very important. Uh, we all have the same 24 hours in the day. And then finally, uh, we all become what we choose to learn. And when I thought of that one, it's not just about reading books, because one thing I haven't mentioned at all is I'm a huge fan of books. I, you know, I keep them with me all the time. I put them out when I go to coffee shops. I put them out as a, please start a conversation with me if you like this book. And I've had people stop me and say, oh my gosh, I effing love that book. And that if somebody cusses about a book, that's somebody I want to hang out with. <laughs> but, but it's not just what we choose to learn by the books that we pick up. It's also the lessons we choose to learn out of the, the adversity and the challenges that we go through. So we can, we can walk away with that experience and have hate in our heart. Or we can walk away from that experience and take a positive lesson from it. Uh, so those to me are the three building blocks of, of everything that I am and everything that I do. Everything else is just kind of a, a fun spinoff of, of one of those things. Yeah, that's great. And shameless plug here, you know, he has, what was it, a video of a book nerd video series or something like that that I watched on your LinkedIn. That was just funny because that was when you were just you know, digesting books and stuff like that. So I would just ask you, man, like, how many books have you read up to this date? And what is like your top three? Yeah, yeah. I really picked up the first books in about 2010. Uh, I've probably read 150 or so since then. But the interesting thing about me and most people that I talk to is I don't just read the books. The ones that really grab me, I, I, either work with the author in some way, shape or form. I connect and really show, uh, you know, how much their books changed my life and I connect with them and they've, they've in turn given me a lot of time and energy and, and advice, but I also implement and I take action from some of those books. So there are a handful that I go back to all the time. Uh, if I had to go with top three, um, John A. Cuff is probably the most impactful human that his books have ever grabbed me by the heart. Like it was the book start that, that inspired me to have the confidence to go out and do the Ted talk. Um, but more importantly than that, there's a book relevant called do over, which is all about transition. And, and actually it was so amazing because when he wrote that book, I read it and I was in tears and I said, John, this is a perfect book for veterans because it's all about transition. It's it literally declaring a do-over, whether it comes from a negative experience, a positive experience, a voluntary or an involuntary transition, you got fired, you got promoted, whatever. Like there's something that happens there and it's, he has things that you can ha always be working on that, that help you through any of those. And one of them is relationships. But when I read the book, I was in tears and I told him, I said, John, this, this is huge for veterans. He's like, I didn't write it for veterans. And I said, I know. He goes, why don't you write a blog post about the top five things for it? And, and I'll, I'll post it on my blog. And it was like half a million people. And so that was a, a way to reach half a million people. And I can tell you a million things about how that one book connected me to some of the most incredible organizations on the planet. So that's definitely one that's good for anybody. I recommended it to somebody last night. Yeah. Um, and then Another one, especially for ambitious vets, I think would be really relevant. And it's one that I needed for me. Um, You're a badass at making money by Jen Sincero. 
And there's a lot of money books out there. There's a lot and it's how to do it and all that stuff. Obviously I'm a deep level Y person, but there's something about the way that Jen describes our relationship with money and tackles that from the core that has fundamentally changed my life. And I only say that because I, I had a really horrible experience and a really bad relationship from the first time I ever saw money all the way up until uh, a really pivotal moment in my life. And it's been hard to work past that, but that's one that's helped me. And I think um, for anybody that thinks money is a priority or any of that stuff, how to be, uh, you're a badass at making money by Jen Smith. Well, yeah, I can definitely relate to the money problems as we spoke to on the phone multiple times. I mean, I think one of the biggest landmines that we hit as ambitious vets, in my opinion, is just the survival scarcity mindset in the first few years that we get out in our relationship to money, right? Because it totally changes. So that, that's, that's huge. I'll have all those links in the show notes below ambitious vets. So make sure you check that out. Dave, man, before we let you go, man, obviously I knew this was going to be complete golden grenade city that we were walking through, man. And I don't know about you, Ambitious Vet, but I got, I got a lot of notes over here. But I want to leave you, man, by you just being able to plug your new podcast. I mean, I think through all this knowledge that you've gained, both practical and through just reading books, I'm excited about this podcast. I'm your newest subscriber. Um, I want you to kind of promote why you started that podcast and what an ambitious vet can walk away with listening to it. Talked about the podcast for a long time. The challenge with me is as I pivoted from topic to topic, it was all about veteran transition. And then it was, but I was being an entrepreneur at the same time. And then do I just make it about sales? Because that's what most people were hiring me for. Or my passion was about company culture and core values and, and vision. So is it about that? And I just I think fear really just held me back for a really long time. The, the aha moment that made me launch it, uh, started working with a new, uh, started working with a new client that was going to take almost all my full-time energy. And my fear there was that what would it do to my brand, right? So this is the whole jump of deliver capital. I always have to ask myself, what's it going to do to my brand? What am I going to learn? And am I helping people? And Whenever I realized everything that I've been teaching is all the things about business, whether it be marketing, all the stuff that I'm really excited about. But what I've learned is I could teach people how to make money. Do people need crisis leadership right now? Hell yeah, I could go do that too. But, but what, what some people need right now is they just need freaking money. Like, and if I, you know, by partnering with, with Deliver Capital, I realized we were going to be able to help a lot of people get money that they needed. It was so crazy because that's what completed the, the, the spectrum for the Dave Means Business podcast, right? Been using the, the it, it just felt like it created the whole brand. So I had a coach just hold me accountable to the dates and deadlines. I launched uh, in like 30 days. But what was really fun about it and why I'm so excited and I think most people can get value is I made a list of 275 people that I can catch up with who are all doing great things that some of them are big influencers, some of them not so much, but everyone's doing their hustle. And I just want to shine a spotlight on them, serve them, share their, you know, what they're doing with the community. So the Dave Means podcast is really just, it's a long time in the works. I've already interviewed Lee Cockrell from, that used to run Disney. I interviewed the director of brand experience at Simon Sinek. Um, I interviewed the, the founder of podcast movement. Um, I interviewed uh, uh, the secretary of commerce for the state of Oklahoma. Like I've, I've just, and that was just like in the last couple of days. So uh, just really excited to share that and get their stuff out to more people. Yeah, brother. That's, I love it. I love the background story. I love the relationship building around it and ambitious vet go and check it out. I mean, Dave, where can an ambitious vet go and subscribe right now? If they're just like, Hey, I want to, I want to go learn from somebody like this. It knows how to relationship build, create effortless opportunity through relationships and where do they go and subscribe to this podcast? Yeah, the, the two main places are uh, the Apple iTunes route and Spotify. Uh, it's, I'm not much of an Apple guy. Everyone keeps telling me that's the most important <laughs> one. And I'm like, uh, cool, I'm not really doing it for like any important reason. I'm just doing it. Uh, but my, my son thinks it's really cool. Like, You're on Spotify? It's like, yeah. So that's the, that's the really fun one for me. So Spotify and, and iTunes. Uh, and I think there's a couple other ones out there, Stitcher and stuff like that. Still waiting for confirmation from iHeartRadio, but the two main ones are there. 
Nice, nice, brother. Well, hey, man, thanks for extracting, doing one of your superpowers. You have many of them, but extracting content into a product called a podcast and continuing to find new ways to serve us ambitious vets, man. It's been an absolute pleasure, man. Anytime I get some time with you, man, it's just, it's, it's amazing, man. So thanks for joining the show. Thanks, dude. The Ambitious Vet is available on all popular podcast platforms. Go to VetTrainingCoaching.com to subscribe, rate, and share with fellow vets. Again, today's show is brought to you by Audible. Ambitious Vet, if you're ready to gain the knowledge, the wisdom, or maybe just the entertainment you need to pursue your next goal in your life, career, and business, look no further than Audible. Get a 30-day free trial on us by checking out www.audibletrial.com forward slash AMV. Again, that's www.audibletrial.com forward slash AMV.